Hey, Happy New Year from Chris from Record Talk out to Rob Walker and the vinyl community at large and everybody out there on YouTube. So this is the 2024 vinyl tag. So if you don't know what it is, every year there is a list of questions for people uh, to answer and to show their records and to kind of share what they like along with other people. And so uh, Rob Walker let the music play over in England is the one who's been setting up the questions the last few years. So let's get into the questions. Question number one, favorite record you purchased in 2023? So this is something I got from Vinyl Me Please relatively recently. It's Herbie Hancock's uh, Sextant from 1973. Um, and um, this, was, this came out just before Headhunters. This is kind of a great electronic, funky, jazzy um, thing. Lots of synthesizers. I've really enjoyed listening to this record a lot. Um, this is obviously a reissue. I'm not giving away my number one favorite album of 2023 yet. My favorite albums from 2023 is a video that will be coming out in a few days. The last, no, question number two, the last record you bought in 2023 the um, last thing that I got was an order of three singles that I'd ordered from Sweet Time Records. Uh, I'm going to show one of them to answer this question, <coughs> a second one to answer a later question, and the third one in the punk vinyl tag, um, Tommy's Vinyl Knot, is running. So if you're into punk, you might want to participate or watch some of those. But the one I'm going to show to answer this question is by a band called Sis Boomba. Not Kiss, but Kiss Boom Ba. And so this is a, a modern-day garage rock band from Philadelphia. Out of Our Tree was a song originally by the Wailers in 1965. Not Bob Marley's Wailers, but the Tacoma Rock and Roll Garage Band, who are most known for the song Tall Cool One. Uh, but this was a um, Kiss Boom Ba doing their cover of it re more recently. Uh, question number three, a band or singer who released two or more albums in the same year? Well, I could go get Herbie Hancock Headhunters and show that along with Sextant. There are some obvious classic rock albums that I bet other people are going to show, but I'm going to do, if you're a regular viewer of my channel, what you think will be the obvious thing for me to do and to get in the Juliana Hatfield love right away. Um, she's actually done this a few times in her career. So 2019, which is now five years ago, um, she had her album, Juliana Hatfield Weird. Um, and I think, for example, the song uh, Lost Ship is one of her best songs ever was on this particular album. And then one of her uh, covers albums, uh, she did her uh, Juliana Hatfield Sings the Police, which came out in late 2019. I think one was January of 2019 and the other one was like November or December of 2019. Um, so question number four, if you could only pick to listen to music from one decade, which would it be? Uh, so I'm picking the 1990s. So I'm actually picking the decade where I was in my 20s rather than my teens. I think lots of people are going to pick when they were in their teens. Uh, I'm committing a full paw by showing a CD rather than vinyl. I'm showing you Sub Pop's uh, The Grunge Years, which came out in a limited edition of 500,000. Um, and so, of course, you can see this is basically just a who's who of the Seattle scene at, at that time period. And I do realize that a few of the songs on the CD were originally released in 1989. You'll just have to deal with that fact. Then question number five, show a record by a band or singer from Manchester. So I'm interpreting it, you pick a band or a singer, and then it's something that was recorded in Manchester. And so near, not too far away from where I live is Manchester, Tennessee, and there's a large yearly musical festival in Manchester, Tennessee that's called Bonnaroo. And in 2014, Jack White uh, played add Bonnaroo, and then they released um, this box set of one, two, I think, uh, three discs worth of material here in this box set. Um, so there are some records from Manchester. All right, question number six. 
Which band or singer did you listen to most in 2023? For me, the answer may very well have been Morphine. And so here's Morphine Cure for Pain. This is the Light in the Attic reissue from several years ago that I uh, did find used for a tenor, as Rob would say, uh, which I think is an excellent price uh, for a Morphine record. And then we have... I've had a lot of their stuff on CD before. We've got Morphine Like Swimming, first time on vinyl, which came out this year. That went on opaque blue uh, wax. Purplish hue. Uh, this was Morphine's final album called The Night, which I believe came out in 2000. I think this was after Mark Sandman's untimely passing. Um, so I checked out a lot of Morphine. At some point, I'm going to rank the albums of Morphine which I haven't gotten around to yet. Uh, question number seven. Show seven seven-inch records bought in 2023. Well, I bought a lot more than seven of them because I love to dig through 45s. I'm going to do like a 45 for each decade. I am going to skip one decade along the way. Let's start out with the 1950s. So here's a recent $1 find. This is Chuck Herod and the Anteaters. So they are from Louisville, Kentucky. On this minor champion label, it's got the parallel lines. So the A side is Sandy, which is a dippy teen ballad. So uh, Max Stevens and John Bip Bop Boom would tell you to flip this sucker over and play the rocker. They want to fight on the B side, which is actually a much better song. I think this is the one that actually sometimes ends up on like Rockabilly Comps. So this is from 1959. 1965, we got some James Brown. I got you, I feel good. Uh, of course, you have no problem if you flip over a James Brown single because it's going to be good on either side. Um, the King label uh, from the 1970s. This is a, uh, a dollar record that I is worth a lot more than the dollar I paid for. So this is the Jive 5. Notice that uh, 5 is spelled F-Y-V-E because they're trying to be all psychedelic and modern. Featuring Eugene Pitt. So the Jive Five had been like a vocal group, do wappy group from like the early 60s, and then they were trying to like sort of update themselves. This came out in 1970. Um, still got an old school Decca sleeve. I'm not actually sure if that's the correct sleeve for that time period. Uh, this is called Pandering to the Audience, or at least the audience of Rob Walker. So look, it's a Style Council single from 1984. Uh, my Ever Changing Moons. You don't find Style Council picture sleeves digging in the U.S. a lot. Then, of course, 1990s, Sinead O'Connor, Nothing Compares to You. Of course, she's one of the uh, artists that we unfortunately lost this year. And I'm going to skip the 2000s. I don't think I bought a single from the 2000s in 2023. So we'll skip right up to 2019. So this is the second of the three that I bought from Sweet Time Records. The third one, you have to watch my punk vinyl tag to see the third one. The fine lines take a moment. Um, so this is going to be some garagey uh, music as well. And you can see, because it came out recently, it's got to be on colored vinyl. So translucent green vinyl. Um, and... Um, so you've got, uh, they've got, uh, four songs on here. So that's all fun. And then my, uh, record to represent the 2020s. So here's a 2023, one of the Sub Pop Singles Club records. So this is Turkish Psych, Gay Sul Akyol, with Love Buzz as the A-side. Now, I've always thought of Love Buzz as being a Nirvana song coming on the Bleach album, but of course it was actually a cover of a song by the Dutch band, The Shocking Blue. And so those are my 7-7 seven, seven inch records. All right, question number eight. Who's coming to your party? You chose four musically related people to come to an imaginary dinner party, past or present. So I decided I'm going to pick one person that I've actually met before in real life Another person that would actually be realistic for me to have dinner with, and then two geniuses that I uh, would be impossible for me to have dinner with. So first, the person in the music industry who I've actually met is Steve Albini. And of course, I need to get my record. 
And so, of course, by album by Steve Albini is songs about playing poker. Why songs about playing poker? Well, because poker was actually um, sort of the reason why I met Steve Albini. Uh, back when I was a serious poker player, would go out to play in the World Series of Poker. Uh, some of my friends who were serious poker players, a few of them were from Chicago. Albini's from Chicago. Albini's a serious poker player. So we had basically a friend in common, and there was basically a night where we had some drinks together, several of us, and he, Albini was one of the people there. And there was actually very little talk about music uh, that particular night. Um, the next one, the one who would be realistic for me to actually meet is S.G. Goodman, Teeth Marks. Um, so she's somebody who's uh, kind of making her name on the Americana scene right now. Uh, she grew up in Hickman, Kentucky, which is about an hour west of here, right on the Mississippi River. Uh, she went to school at the university I work at. Um, and the reason I've never met her, um, but she is friends with some professors that I know. So it's, again, a situation of having uh, a common acquaintance. So um, I might bump into her at the dollar store. Um, and so then geniuses that I will never have a chance to meet. Well, there's Prince, of course. Um, so there's a very early Prince album. Uh, we could ask him what happened to his shirt. And um, but then I'm also going to go with Richard Feynman, of course, is a physicist but was also an avid amateur uh, bongo player and did congas, um, which maybe is a bit square, but um, is kind of cool to talk about. Number nine, we lost them. Choose one musician who passed away in 2023. Of course, I already mentioned Sinead O'Connor, uh, but I'm going to talk about Andy Rourke. Um, so the Smiths band from Manchester in England. Uh, so Andy Rourke, who passed away at the age of 59, I believe it was in May of 2023. Um, so he was the bass player. And if you think the Smiths are just Johnny Marr and the singer, well, my favorite Smith song, Barbarism Begins at Home, I think the bass line is the really uh, the part that makes that song as magical as it is. Uh, question number 10. Imagine you can only listen to music from one country. USA. 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 Question number 11. Uh, name three final community channels you discovered in 2023. Second, Madam Sin's channel returned. So I didn't discover Madam Sin in 2023, but I discovered the newly reinstated channel. And of course, Madam Sin plays those wonderful records that most of us just don't have. And then the third, and this is again another shout out to Tommy's Vinyl Knot, introducing me to some of the other uh, Finnish channels I didn't know about. I'll mention 6758 Posse, so 6758 PASI. He doesn't put out a lot of videos, but um, he does put out some interesting stuff, so uh, think about him. Number 12, show a record you bought when you were a teenager. Well, almost everything I bought when I was a teenager was on cassette. Uh, here's one that I recently rebought on vinyl, and Rob is groaning, Crocus Headhunter. Now, on a recent video of mine, I said you only needed two ACDC albums. So this is like your third ACDC record. So you own one with Bon Scott and you own one with Brian Johnson. And then uh, they had changed things up. You can have this is the best Crocus record. And so you have another singer, Mark uh, Storacci, uh, who is a good singer. Now, I do recognize the lack of Angus and Malcolm Young on guitar as a weak point of owning a Crocus record. Um Show number 13, show a funk or soul record. So we've got the Undisputed Truth, Method to the Madness, 1976, special $3. It looks like a uh, Craig Danger uh, special here. Um, and uh, Discogs, they describe it as psychedelic soul disco, which sounds super cool. And it kind of looks P-Funky. But there's a reason why these records are cheaper than P-Funk records. It's not quite as out there as the cover would let you believe. All right, question 14. Show a record you think everyone has, then show a record you think no one has. Well, of course, everybody has Asia by Steely Dan. In fact, Chris from Record Talk has not one but two copies of it uh, that he inherited in his dad's collection. Uh, the one that I think sounds better is the German import. So if you want, if you want a 
uh, Chris from Record Talk does a shootout of Steely Dan uh, Asia video. Please let me know. And then there's the American version on ABC Records. And, of course, I almost never listen to either of these records, by the way, for what it's worth. And then the record, which I know none of you have, is this single that I dug very recently. Uh, Gil Mutz on Crawford Records. If I can't be your number one, number two on you. And so I looked it up on Discogs. I looked it up on 45cat.com, eBay, various Google searches. I've come up with absolutely no information about this song, no information about this artist. I listened to the record. It's obviously country, um, and it's probably from the early 1980s, although it could be earlier or later than that. Uh, I don't think it's earlier than, say, sometime in the 70s, I think would be the earliest. But I have absolutely no information on this record. As far as I know, I'm the only person on earth that has a copy of it. I don't even know if Gil has a copy of it. By the way, if you need either Steely Dan Asia or that Gil Munt single, uh, make me an offer. She's great. Show a record by a female artist. Well, of course, PJ Harvey is great. And in 2023, I hit up the Sound of Vinyl sales. And they had a lot of PJ Harvey records, so I beefed up my PJ Harvey collection. I'm happy to show the Peel Sessions 91 through 2004 record uh, to answer this particular question. Uh, question number 16, the favorite video you posted on your channel in 2023 and the favorite video you watched in 2023. Uh, so based on your viewage, um, your favorite video of mine was the one called There Are Never Good Records in the Antique Store, right? Which has uh, over 2,500 views, something I only posted three weeks ago. So by my standards, that's like super viral. I noticed that I'm not in the thumbnail, so maybe that's a secret, although correlation is not causation. And then my favorite video from someone else, I'll go with Tommy's Vinyl Knot again. The Finnish Vinyl Community awards which are super funny and i played a small role in that particular video that was also came out about three weeks ago so it may just be the fact that i can't really remember what happened more than about three weeks ago uh, i'm sure there was some sort of entertaining shit show that happened on rachel's ghost on some random date maybe june 17th for example number 17 show me a record you would describe as a 90s classic the lemonheads it's a shame about ray so this came out back in 2022 and so um the original album of course had the 12 songs and then they tacked on the 13th song mrs robinson on the cds uh this has an extra disc so mrs robinson is relegated to the second disc along with uh demos and live recordings and various other goodies so it's got extras but only one disc of extras it doesn't go too overboard with the extras and love the Lemonheads, love this album. It's, in my opinion, their best album ever. And where's the classic picture of them? There they are. Uh, number 18, if I could walk into the cover, um, well, I, I think here's King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard, Nonagon Infinity from 2016. I got to figure that the King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard world has to be more interesting and not as aggravating as the world we actually live in. So I'm going to go live in the King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard world. It's like a greatest hit. Show a record you're so familiar with, it feels like a greatest hit. Well, I could show, of course, I could have shown this as a 90s classic. Basically, the Nirvana and the, the, Nirvana and the Lemonheads, I could flip-flop them for the questions. So, of course, this is Nirvana, never mind. I don't think I need to say much more about that record. And then, uh, question number 20, the final question. Show me an album released in 1974. So, I'm going to leave the obvious classic rock picks to other people. I'm going to show you some fairly obscure Roots Reggae, Dadawa, with Peace and Love. Of course, I have a recent, um, I think this was a reissue from about three years ago on Vinyl Me Please. So it's Trojan Records, but on modern orange vinyl. Of course, 
the Jamaican OGs, the ones that came out in 1974, go for hundreds of dollars. The 1975 Trojans that were released in the UK are like $50, $60 records. Um, but um, just to show you that I own reggae not made by Bob Marley. And so thanks to Rob Walker for setting up all these questions. And for all of those of you that watch my videos, if you made it through, this is over 20 minutes. I usually try not to go over 20 minutes, but it happened this time.